spending more than a decade in prison, a man's murder conviction is overturned because of the testimony provided by a key witness. Nate Rogers is first at four with what the family is calling a Christmas miracle. Nate. That's right, Anthony and Natalie, a Christmas miracle indeed. It's been an emotional day for the family of Darian Harris. Um, he's expected to be released here from the Cook County Department of Corrections within the next hour or so, we're told. Listen to this, guys. At 18 years old, Harris was sentenced to 76 years in prison for a crime he did not commit, arrested just one week shy of his high school graduation with hopes of becoming a music producer. Now, loved ones left the Leighton Criminal Courthouse this afternoon, overjoyed at a judge's exoneration of the now 30-year-old. Harris was wrongfully convicted in 2011 of murdering Rondell Moore at a BP gas station in Woodlawn. His attorneys say no physical evidence linked him to the crime. Also, the alleged getaway driver eventually testified that police coerced him into falsely identifying Harris. But here's the big one. The prosecution star witness later found legally blind. The eyewitness that the judge said was honest, was credible, was unimpeachable, he turned out to be blind, legally blind. This was discovered after the conviction. <laughs> we were all so excited. We were just so excited. Like I said, we can't believe it. I guess when he gets out, we'll, it'll be real. Yeah, Harris's mother also told us that this feels like a dream. And as you said, at the top of the newscast, she says it is the best Christmas gift ever. Now, Harris's attorneys tell us there are many more Darian Harris's locked up at 26 in California right now. We're told that Harris should be released within the next hour. So, of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on this story on air and online. Outside of the Cook County Department of Corrections, Nate Rogers. made it. Twelve and a half years, I made it, though. I've been through a lot. A lot of times, people don't understand the things that we go through being incarcerated. Not only was I incarcerated, my family and friends was incarcerated. They had to deal with this same thing that I had to deal with. Me missing all these Christmas, and I get to finally spend a Christmas with my family. I get to actually call my family when I feel like it. They call me when they feel like it. I've been through a lot. I had my struggles. I had my breakdowns. I'd have been on suicide watch, but I made it. But I'm also I got so much trauma. I can't sleep without psych medication. I can't even think straight. I'm paranoid. I'm messed up. But with the strength of my family, my friends, I made it. Though. And this is what messed you up. Yes, it messed me up bad, very bad. Like, Darian, how do you feel right now, standing outside? I mean, you're not inside of a jail cell. You're not in cuffs. You're not in a suit. It don't it ain't register yet. <laughs> I still don't need like it ain't register yet. It's gonna hit me. Though. It hit me. I'm gonna be happy. I lost, I lost a lot. I lost all my friends. I lost a lot of things. I lost things I could never get back. No amount of money can repay the time that I lost. I already spent it. You chose, you asked me to choose the money or my time back. I already take my time back because I missed some of my best years. But man, I'm going to live some good years now. What do you, what do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Um, have a family. Uh, Gary, going back to the sentence of 76 years and then realizing today that the star witness um, was literally blind, what was going through your mind when you got that news? Did you believe at that moment there's going to come a day where I'll be free? Yes, my mentor, Samuel Green, he's a diabetic, and when he read my case, he said, I don't have to read no more. That's your way home, and I didn't understand it at first. And then that's when I dug deeper, and that's when I found out that he was legally blind. And I brought it to my lawyers, and they did their investigation. They pulled it up, and they found all the reports. And Darren, for the, for the scores of other black men that are locked up in the Cook County prison right now, are wrongfully convicted, what do you want to say to them? What do you want to say to their families, offering them hope during the holiday season? Look, look at our cameras. The way I made it, everybody else can make it. My fight don't stop here. Without, without the system that I was in, I wouldn't be who, who, I, am, who I am today as a man. And the fight don't stop. I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to continue to be an activist. I'm going to law school. I got to expose what's really going on. When I sit down with a real interview, I can sit down and tell y'all the things that I've been through, the racism, the 
things out of the way we was treated. We treated like animals. I had to act like savages. I played with feces. I was hungry, so that's the only way we could eat. When you playing with feces, just to rob somebody just to eat. It's sad. It's crazy. That's the way to eat. You know, Jimmy Soto was there today. Forty plus years. Jimmy Soto's here. He's here. He's here. He had some powerful things to say. Jimmy, you you spent a long time in there. You had a seventy-six year sentence. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling standing next to the man who went through and you guys met in prison, I believe? Yeah, right? we met in Stateville, yes. Sir. Yeah. Tell me how what this moment is like and not pine bars. Man, it feels unreal, but it's real, man. Our fight don't stop. We're gonna continue fighting for everybody else that's, that's locked right. up. For all the black mothers that have to go through this because they the main ones that suffer, the black mothers. We go into the system, look at the symbol of justice. That's how we enter the system as black men, blind to the things that we have to go through. The scale is tipped in the favor of the prosecution. I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for my life. Why is the scale in favor to them? Why is it an even fight? I'm supposed to be judged by a jury of my peers. You put 12 people on the stand and never step foot on the south side of Chicago. How they gonna know what I've been through? How they gonna understand my situation? When I was in Menard, all they said, oh, just because he's legally blind doesn't mean that you're not guilty. Those are the same people that's put on the stand to judge me. And that's what we gotta go through. When we gotta fight for our lives, we're supposed to be innocent to prove we're guilty, but we're guilty to prove we're innocent. And the fight is long. I got my fight over with because of my mentor, Samuel Kareem. He stayed on me every day in that cell. He made sure I did it. He challenged me in everything. In everything, he beat me in. He's old, but he beat me in everything. You know? And then Michael Sullivan taught me how to be a man as well. So with those two guys, those two guys, people say they menace to society. They're not deemed to be out. Michael Sullivan is wrongfully convicted. He be gone 28 years. Why doesn't nobody help him on? Why is it that he still have to suffer through everything? Samuel Kareem, he was defending himself. Four people was coming to kill him, and he defended himself. Why is he still locked up? I was in the cell with a man on death row. Sometimes you don't even know how that feels to be in the cell with somebody that I know don't supposed to be here, but that man that was here, that's why I'm here right now, and I'm going to fight for him. Him and Michael Sullivan are my number one priority. Does your mom want to say anything you talked about the mothers? <laughs> what is going on in your heart? Um, I'm... I'm at a loss for words. I'm just so excited. But I want to tell the families, please do not stop fighting. Um, for the, all the uh, inmates, hold your head and please stay in those law books. This is living food. Don't stop fighting. It comes home one day. Jimmy, what is this moment like? Because you said something earlier, now you get to stand next to Derek. Tell me what this moment is like. I mean, I said it before, is you pay it forward, you know? He's going to pay it forward for Michael Sullivan and Samuel Kareem, and then they're going to pay it forward. And pretty soon, there's going to be a lot of brothers and sisters who are wrongfully convicted that are going to be here, black and brown people. And I think that it's just going to continue because the system is truly broken. Yeah. And even though some that may not be wrongfully convicted, Constitution say they supposed to be put in this prison system as a rehabilitation. They supposed to have a second chance at life. They deserve their check of sin. They deserve their second chance. Nobody is perfect. A sin is a sin. A crime is a crime. But how you know this person changed if you never give them a chance? You put us in the jails. I had to learn on my own. They didn't have no programs for us to learn. I had to learn business books on my own. I sat in that cell and I had my family and friends send me these business books. I had to learn about stocks on my own, real estate, trucking, everything. So I don't have to get out of real fear and turn to the streets just to do, just to make it. And now a lot of times we are judged because they say, oh, he got out, he re-offended. What opportunity did you give him? You want to take these guns out of these kids' hands, but can you place an opportunity in the other hand for them to stay out of the streets? That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So I want to just thank Kim Fox again. And I want to thank my lawyer right here. She fought for me real hard. My angel. And I just want to thank my family. And I want to thank Sammy Kareem and Michael Sullivan. I wish that from this interview that people reach out to them and start trying to help them now because they my main fight. And I want to do a real interview to sit down with somebody and really talk about what I went through to really break down the prison system and understand what we've been through. Because nobody really understands. Nobody really understands until it's really broken down because our, our families got to pay these tax dollars just to send us to trial and go to these things. I was just in East County with these people. And I was just in Menard. I was just in Stateville with people that lost hope. These people that feel like they ain't never going home. And it's sad. It's just sad. The way we fight, we've been new about this situation since, what, 2017, we've been new he's legally blind. Why did it take so long? And why we had to fight so hard? Sometimes when the evidence is just that blank, just let them go. 
and it had to take for Kim Fox to step in. So it just shows you that everybody else is just not right. The conviction integrity denied my case, and they say, oh, some Mr. Perry. That's not even my name. They didn't even have the dash to spell my name right, you know? It just shows you that they don't care. And we just need somebody to care for us. We need help. And then they're going to pay it for And pretty soon, there's going to be a lot of brothers and sisters who are wrongfully convicted that are going to be here, black and brown people. And I think that it's just going to continue because the system is truly broken. And even though some that may not be wrongfully convicted, the Constitution says they're supposed to be put in this prison system as a rehabilitation. They're supposed to have a second chance at life. They deserve their check of sin. They deserve their second chance. Nobody is perfect. A sin is a sin. A crime is a crime. But how you know this person changed if you never give them a chance? You put us in the jails. I had to learn on my own. They didn't have no programs for us to learn. I had to learn business books on my own. I sat in that cell and I had my family and friends send me these business books. I had to learn about stocks on my own, real estate, trucking, everything. So I don't have to get out of Rio and turn to the streets just to do, just to make it. And now a lot of times we are judged because they say, oh, he got out, he reoffended. What opportunity did you give him? You want to take these guns out of these kids' hands, but can you place an opportunity in the other hand for them to stay out of the streets? That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. yeah, yeah. So I want to just thank Kim Fox again, and I want to thank my lawyer right here. She fought for me real hard, my angel. And I just want to thank my family. Man, I want to thank Sammy Kareem and Michael Sullivan. I wish that from this interview that people reach out to them and start trying to help them now because they my main fight. And I want to do a real interview to sit down with somebody and really talk about what I went through to really break down the prison system and understand what we've been through. Because nobody really understands. Nobody really understands until it's really broken down because our, our families got to pay these tax dollars just to send us a trial and go to these things. I was just in East County with these people. And I was just in Menard. I was just in Stateville with people that lost hope. It's people that feel like they ain't never going home. And it's sad. It's just sad. And the way we fight, we've been new about this situation since, what, 2017, we've been new, he's legally blind. Why did it take so long? And why we had to fight so hard? Sometimes when the evidence is just that blank, just let them go. And it had to take for Kim Fox to step in, so it just shows you that everybody else is just not right. The conviction integrity denied my case, and they say, oh, some Mr. Perry. That's not even my name. They didn't even have the dash to spell my name right, you know? It just shows you that they don't care. And we just need somebody to care for us. We need help. We're not bad people. We, we just, a, just a product of our environment. Nobody understands how it is to grow up. It's, it shouldn't be normal for us to be walking past and see a dead body. Oh, that's just normal. That's just a normal day. Drug in. Oh, that's just a normal day. He drugged in to feed his family. He doing this to feed his family. He don't have no other way out. He don't have another way out. So I'm going to be everybody way up. I'm going to be the face of everything. What are you going to do tonight? Home. Go chill with my family. Piece of food. That's real food. Thank you, man. We're excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? You're good for now. All right.